Okay, so I'm going to speak. I had a question on fear uh, and uh, I think uh, and, and being in fear. Also on can, is, can fear be leg legitimate or is it always uh, something like that? Or, oh yes, fear, can it, can, is fear spiritual if it's like trying to tell you to stay away from the situation? I think that was it. And also, um, why would the universe ask you to go into the world and do something which might lead you to be disconnected? I think that's also, that's also a very good, good point. I'd like to go to that bit first because I think that's the juicy mm. bit of the thing. Like, uh, and I totally relate to it, you know, I'd prefer to stay in my room and forgive everyone. Uh, and, uh, and I'm doing a pretty good job of doing that, so far God's allowing me to do that mostly. Um, you've got to sort of see it, you know, I think everyone's karma is very, very different. And I think some people can uh, have enough good fortune, good karma, to just sort of sit in their room and transcend the world and get to enlightenment and they just need to stay in their room. So that's a, that's a I mean, I, I, I think that's quite, quite a, I mean, I think that, personally for me, I'd like that one. Uh, but uh, you've got to, you know, I think what, if you look at, uh, you know, a lot of the, just in general themes, I don't want to go into a big thing, you know, if you look at spiritual works, they talk about the chakras and the different lessons uh, that, that go through developing the various chakras. You have the base chakra, the power chakra, the throat chakra, the heart chakra, the crown chakra. Or if you, if you want to prism it through the various archetypes, you have the various archetypes and discernment through the various archetypes as well. But it's like as you, depending on what level of consciousness you are and what karma you've got and what lessons you need to go through, there's a different pathway that the universe asks you to go through. And spiritual discernment can be very, very difficult in different situations. So, and also you have to see karma as well. Sometimes there can be, you know, the easy option for transcending a lesson is like the universe won't allow you to, to get that easy option. So I think, you know, situations where um, uh, and you'd have to look karmically as to why, you know, you can't just resolve a situation just by praying for forgiveness for someone. Mm -hmm. You know, like, okay, I'm just going to pray my, I'm going to pray my head off and forgive them non-stop and I won't have to see them ever again. And it's like the universe goes, nope, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you can't get away. With okay, it worked for the last ten times, but this time you're going to have to go in going to have to meet this person and speak to this person and communicate with this person mm -hmm. and you can't just forgive it away mm -hmm. you know and that's I mean sometimes you can for some students and then sometimes mm -hmm. the universe won't let you and why is it that the universe won't let you get away with that one it's like you're thinking of there must be a spiritual you just have to pray a bit more or just uh, just do the feel the feelings or go to the observer and and they're going to disappear and I won't have to deal with it and, and maybe that works, or maybe it doesn't. In which case, I would, I would say sometimes you don't know what your past life karma is. Uh, and I think um, I'll give an illustration of a story from Hawkins, which I thought was very interesting. And this might be helpful to a lot of spiritual students. So Hawkins was, like, incredible. I mean, he could do what I call the letting go process and the cancelling beliefs like a true enlightened teacher. He could go into operations without anesthetic and go into a state of bliss. To be able to do that, you have to be on the razor's edge and not resist as they're cutting you on the operating table. And he could do that. So that's like a very advanced level of surrender, even under extreme circumstances. So he's pretty good at doing that. But then one day, you know, it's just a bog standard hernia operation. And he's gone through these more difficult extreme situations and gone into states of bliss by not resisting, even as they're cutting up. Just a bog standard, uh, um, and also the other thing you've got to understand, it tends to happen, I mean I'm getting some bizarre experiences with people, but as you get more spiritually evolved, you start to get flashbacks to your past lives. Um, this tends to happen, why does that happen? It's because you're dissolving the idea of separation, your story of being a separate self. So as you go to the witnesser of your thoughts and your own story in this lifetime, you suddenly get to such a detached witnessing 
that you can start to get access to information from other past lifetimes. So a, a lot of enlightened teachers start to become aware of all their past life stuff. It becomes, you know, that, that block of being so identified with your story starts to dissolve. Anyway, he was going through a hernia operation and then, uh, and then suddenly he was in excruciating pain. And, and he wasn't able to just, you know, go into a state of bliss and non-resistance. And he had a flashback to a past lifetime where he had skewered a soldier on the, on the battlefield and didn't finish him off, like the soldier's conduct, you know, like you savagely, you know, in those days you'd, you'd die a horrible death if you don't finish them off. I guess the medical treatment maybe was medi medieval times, so you should, fin you know, soldiers could finish them off, but don't leave them in terrible agony. And uh, he, um, he didn't finish the soldier off. He just speared him in the groin and left him to die, which would mean like a, probably a horrible, long, slow death of infection and death. And he had the guilt. He had the guilt that he should have finished him off. So when you hold that guilt, it's like a karmic package. You didn't do the right thing spiritually. So you hold guilt, and to hold guilt means you deserve punishment. So that karma gets stored away for divine timing uh, until, until you, either, you either let it go through good karma or through another mechanism of releasing it, or else you have to pay it back the hard way. I call paying back karma the hard way, undoing. As you've done unto others, you experience it done, on, done unto yourself. So that's the hard way of undoing karma. Like if I, if I uh, sort of bash someone on the head with a hammer, I could undo that karma by waiting for the universe to allow someone to bash my head with a hammer. And then I've paid that off, you know, I've done that. You know, the universe, okay, you paid it off the hard way. So, but I have paid off my karma. So, and then he got the flashback why he wasn't able to use the spiritual technique in that thing. It's like there wasn't karmic permission. You know, he had to undo that uh, with, and release the guilt in that way. So sometimes, for whatever reason, for, uh, you could, if you could do muscle testing or could do past life research, you'd find out in this opportunity you have to do it the hard way. Sometimes I think, you know, some people are very, you know, I won't use the word lucky, but have the good karma to just come here, know they want enlightenment, and suddenly get accepted to an ashram, whereas a spiritual community where you just sit and everyone's in the observer non-stop and you go to enlightenment and you don't have to deal with the world. No jobs, no nothing, just your guru, and then you're, you're, you're free forever. You don't have to come back to this place. But some people, it's like the universe won't let you get away with that. Um, now the spiritual, so let's say I was in a job, let's say I was, um, let's say I'm, I'm feeling very peaceful and blissful and I was in a job and someone said like, oh, you know, we really encourage you to go to this high level position, uh, which will be like, you'll have, like, you know, you'll be, you'll be having to deal with a lot more stresses You'll get a bit more money, uh, but we're going to put enormous pressure on you. We want you to do it. Now, if something like that happened to me, and I was in one of those jobs, I would probably, um, I think, you know, for me, what I do know is that my whole life is dependent on my spiritual <coughs> vibration. Now, you know, for me, it's like always a red herring to go for situations in the world which drag my level of consciousness down, unless I have to do it. I will not, even now, I will not, take an op I will not take something to do in the world which will drag my level of consciousness down for what I call an ego game. Like if someone said to me, like, Sabir, um, you know, you can have your own TV show on primetime TV, but you have to, um, you have to, I don't know, say that, I don't know, say something that's non-integrous. I can't think of something. Like... Uh, like uh, like fried food is good for you or something, I don't know, I can't make something I can't think of anything but I just know that would spiritually not sit well with me maybe not even that maybe it could be like <clears throat> maybe that's too extreme that's an obvious example because that, you know, I think most spiritual seekers wouldn't fall well, they might do you know, we'll give you like a hundred million pounds, but you have to say this is the best brand of toothpaste at the end of your thing. <laughs> but, you know, like you can talk for whatever spiritual stuff you want to, but at the end you have to say, buy this toothpaste. You know, so it's like one of those dilemmas, isn't it? You know, should I get the toothpaste and drop or, or, um, or not? But anyway, 
but sometimes it's even like stress you know like if someone said to me like this is a more subtle one like it would be like you know I'm feeling quite serene I've transcended my work environment let's keep on the theme of work and I'm quite serene I'm peaceful I know that that peace and serenity means that everything that comes to me is from that vibration yeah so things are flowing in my life I've forgiven my bosses I'm feeling in a flow life is treating me well I'm in the vibration of serenity and peace and then my boss comes to me and says we're going to promote you to CEO and you've got to make sure that the company earns 700 million pounds every week that's your target and we're going to pay you like a you're going to give you like tons of stock options uh, and and a, a, a six million dollar six six figure uh, uh, pay packet okay but you've got to make sure every month that we hit 700 million in takings and uh, you know, but you, you more or less have to guarantee that that happens. Now, if I think about that, well, that, that, that's, that's not an not, not obvious spiritually thing, but I could see intuitively that I've had the pressure to make sure the company earns 600 million every quarter or whatever it is, that I would feel under enormous pressure. And I know that for me to resolve that, I'd probably go, my level of consciousness would probably drop enormously as I'm trying to resolve all of that. I have to make everyone perform at that level. I have to make sure the company hits the target. And there'll be a lot of spiritual work I'll have to do before I get back to serenity. And I know that when I lose my serenity, things start to get bad because my vibration will now attract a lot of crap until I can get back to that flow state. Now for me, um, if I'm happy with where I am, I would personally say no. Uh, because I don't have to. But sometimes the universe will make, if it's like the universe is forcing you to do it and there's no way of backing out. Uh, and there can sometimes seem like that. It's like, well, you know, uh, uh, for some reason, the scenarios happen where you know, it's like, you know, like your boss will probably sack you straight away unless you say yes to it or something, or who knows what it is. So you know you've got to sort of say yes, or it's going to be even worse. If that's the case, then sometimes you haven't got enough good karma to be able to avoid it. And so you just have to go into it and transcend that situation and hope you can get your vibration back and transcend, forgive everything, get the company working and transcend everything that's coming up and get back. So for me, it's like always choose the vibration. And if your vibration is going to go down, I will only say yes to my vibration going down if I'm forced into a corner to do that. But because... My, you know, it's like, in my ego, it's like, if I get the externals, then, if I get the external, then I'll be happy. That's the whole thing of the ego. It's like, if I could get a six-figure job, I'm going to be, life's going to be easy after I get a six-figure pay packet job. No, it's not. Life is easy when my vibration is that easy. Life is not, you know, just because I have, like, a piece of paper saying I have a six-figure salary doesn't that and my vibration is like I'm in fear and stress that is not going to give me peace that's just a piece of paper and some figures in my bank account um, of course you know people will say I'll get I'll get the six figure and then I'll resolve it and you can do it that way but uh, but for me um, the miraculous the miraculous I remember um, you, you don't know how the universe will provide abundance for you you know, when you're in those fields of abundance. Now, I remember once um, I was working with a spiritual, helping a person spiritually in a 12-step group, and, uh, and then uh, she forgave the flatmate she was in, who really irritated her. And, uh, and then as soon as she forgave her, like someone offered her a, mu a much bigger, uh, better place to live in uh, at a very, very cheap rent, and it was very luxurious. So you don't know how abundance is going to come to you when you let go, when you keep your state. You know, abundance can come in the most mystical and miraculous ways. You know, you think that the money or the job title is going to bring you the stuff, but you don't know if you're in those high vibration, how abundance, you know, I, I know a, a spiritual, you know, someone who was doing spiritual work and they had so much abundance coming their way. You know, land was given to them, all kinds of things, opportunities were given to them. 
and there was hardly any money being in, involved in it. So you don't know when you're in those vibratory states how the most fulfilling things happen and how every, all your needs are met. Whereas from the ego, it's like, well, if I have the job title and I have the money in my bank, or if I have the recognition, that's the source of security, which I don't do. So, so now, if, if, you know, this thing of, um, thing with fear, you know, this is just my view, take what you want to leave. Like, fear for me is not a spiritual vibration. You know, fear is not a spiritual vibration, it's an ego vibration. Now, one of the mantras of the ego is that if I'm in fear, fear, I need fear to survive. Fear is good for my survival and, and thinking is good for my survival. So if I like think a thing to death and I, and, I, and, and I have fear, then I will survive better in this world. I mean, that's like, uh, that's what the ego, those are some of the core ego belief systems in the collective. No, it's like, do you need fear uh, to cross the road? No, you, don't. you can be in a state of peace and still be very uh, in touch with your intuition and, and look right and said. So you actually have a greater sense of spiritual awareness when you're in peace and discernment. Fear is actually going to block your spiritual discernment. So if I have fear around a situation, I'll, if I can, I will clear it and then make a decision. Um, if I have to make a decision, like, let's say there's a promotion and... Uh, uh, and um, I have to say, like, oh, tell me whether you want to take this promotion by next week. You know, come back to me by next week. Then what I would do, because, you know, my head might go, it might be good, it might not be good, it might be good, it might not be good, you know. Like, so, and I'm feeling fearful. Maybe I'll make the wrong choice if I don't take it, or maybe I shouldn't take it, and that's the right choice, you know. And there's this fear and this mental dialogue that's going on in my head. So I'm in, I'm in the eager fear uh, in my head, and have no, and I'm trying to work it out in my head. So, well, I have a week, don't I? So I'm going to like sit with the feelings. I'm going to place the offer uh, into God's, uh, place this uh, job offer into God's infinite light and love, and pray for a miracle and transcendence. I pray for a miracle and a shift in my perception to see this offer different. I sit with the fear until I'm feeling peaceful. Uh, I'll pray. I'll pray to see the sit, the job offer in truth. And I'll pray to God to impress upon my mind whether I should take it or not. And I'll be doing this for the whole week. And then here's the thing, which I say to everyone, you know, it's like, you know, like, can you, don't worry about, like, people want, like, a clear guidance. And I always say, don't worry about getting clear guidance. Just clear as much as you can and trust your intuition. Because everything you do, don't worry about 100%. I'm sure. I don't want something like God to say, take the job at the end of the week, you know, like in clear. No, don't worry about that. You know, it's not, I, that's not the way I do it, or I'd, I'd recommend spiritual students do it, because often God doesn't shout at you at the end of the week, like, take the job or don't take the job. You know, it's like, it's like when I'm in fear and a lot of thinking, that's a low vibration. So this is the way I do it. Like, when you're in a low vibration, whatever you choose will be from that vibration. You might be trying to pretend to make a choice out of a different vibration, but you're making your choice out of that vibration. Does that make sense? You're in fear and you're thinking, and then the choice you'll make, will pretend it will automatically be a reflection. Even if you think about it for like three years in fear, with the current state of thinking, you'll still make the same choice. Just trust that. This is the way I see it. Now, if you spent the whole week getting to a place of a higher vibration, let's say you're more in neutrality, and acceptance and peace and your thinking is much less it's not like life and death now it's like oh it could be nice it could not be nice and I'm still not 100% sure but you're, you can see like it's not a big deal you know uh, anymore your vibration has now gone up a lot okay and because you're now in a much higher vibration just trust that the choice you'll make even if you, your head is not 100% certain will be higher I don't know if that makes sense. Just trust, you know, you know, I'm 90% sure I shouldn't take it, but I have 10% doubt now, but I can't, it's not a big deal. You know, you, you, you are, I would say, much more likely that that is the right choice. You know, don't expect a bolt of blue or something like that. So I just do, you know, like if I had to make a choice in one week, I'd just sit with my feelings, I'd place it into God's infinite light, I'd pray for to see it in truth and that I'd be 
I be uh, intuited to make the right decision, whatever it be, and then I just and you know, I choose at the end of the week what I feel is the the one that I feel mostly is right, if that makes sense, and I know that that will be the right one because I'm making the choice from a higher level of consciousness. You know, when you're at a high level of consciousness, you automatically choose and think and make choices from that level of consciousness. When I'm, when, I'm in, when I'm in peace, I will automatically have thoughts and be drawn to peaceful situations. The more I'm in ego, the more I'm attracted to ego situations. I'll get, it's almost like I manifest. When I'm in ego, I'll manifest situations and opportunities from that level, and I'll be attracted to those. As I resolve it to a higher level of consciousness, I'll have more of an aversion to more ego things, and I'll have more of an attraction, and the universe will start to give me more attractive, like when I was, uh, the more I'm in ego, the more I'm attracted to situations which have drama or intense ups and downs, because that's exciting. It's going to be like a big roller coaster up and down. The more I get into serenity, it's like whenever I can, I'll be choosing situations which I feel will be serene uh, and which will keep my serenity and I'll be more averse to choosing things. Sometimes you have to choose, it's a good question. Sometimes the, the, the universe forces you to choose difficult situations and there's no escape, in which case then you, you do it and you transcend as quickly as possible back to peace in that situation. So, um, okay.